Welcome everyone. Today you are in for a treat because we are making black bean burgers. I love this recipe. I make it for parties all the time and for just sitting around at home too. No parties required. Um, this one is going to be vegan. It normally calls for one egg to be used to um, hold the ingredients together, but that will not be the case today. We'll be using an egg substitute. enjoyed watching me open up a can. That can opener is really hard to use. It's made for strong people. But it's one of the ones that um, doesn't leave sharp edges. So I did this off camera. You're going to want to drain that can of beans into the sink using a strainer like that one and then pour them into a large bowl. And then take a towel uh, from the kitchen and pat the beans dry. I think you also need to rinse them off under the sink. And then pat the beans dry. You don't want them to be very wet. Um, wet things will be the enemy of your burger. Don't smush them down. Just lightly pat until they're pretty good. Use a fork or similar object to smash the beans down. Um, I don't think you need to get them all the way smashed. They don't need to be pulverized. But if you want that in your burger, then you can throw them in a food processor and let that do all the work for you. If you have a few whole beans, that's not a problem. I've got you in my sights now So close but I can touch you Maybe should just pretend this dream will never end. You're feeling lonely. I'm wanting more. These black bean burgers are one of my favorite things to make. It's pretty quick to um, get the patties ready, and then you can have the patties sitting off to the side um, if you're throwing a party, and then just throw one on the stove once someone is ready to eat one. It doesn't take very long for them to cook up. Um, and I like that it has a few ingredients. There's not a whole lot of ingredients with the spices. And that I think makes it uh, very easy to cook, uh, cook this as well. The recipe calls for a quarter of a white onion, which is what I'm, what I'm indicating on my, with my fingers there. Um, I ended up using a little bit more than that uh, because it was easier to cut. Um, I don't think it matters too much, a quarter of an onion, a half an onion, whatever. It, um, it won't affect your burger very much. You can also substitute two tablespoons of onion powder if that is preferable. And take off that weird onion skin. I don't know about you, but if you if you cook a lot and you use onions and you you find that weird onion skin, I sometimes can't get it off my onion when I'm cooking, and I like to get it off because if I cook with it, a it's hard to cut for some reason, it's stronger than the rest of the onion, and then b it it's like it doesn't want to dissolve as well as the rest of the onion does. It's like I'm made out of paper and you're gonna like feel me when I'm in your mouth and it, it just you can totally tell when you're eating the skin of the onion I think maybe maybe you disagree let me know if the skin of the onion is the bane of your existence like it is mine you don't actually have to dice the onions too fine if you've got a larger food processor um, I don't think it matters very much if your food processor is strong or if you want to throw this in the Vitamix and completely liquefy it. Um, that may be a bad idea, though you'll see why soon.
your bell pepper in half and we're going to be dicing up only half of the bell pepper. I typically use green when I'm cooking unless the recipe specifically calls for red. I do not think it matters what color you use in this recipe. It's just going to give you a slightly different flavor in the burger. The recipe calls for two cloves of garlic, but as you will soon see, I had a few random little bitty babies, so I just grabbed those and used those as well. You don't have to worry about mincing them. The food processor will take care of that for you. Um, if you want a somewhat easy way of getting the garlic paper off the cloves, then smash the garlic clove with the flat broad side of a knife using the palm of your hand and it can help. Sometimes if the garlic is too small, I just slice it. I think uh, those tiny baby ones needed to just be cut instead of smashed because they're too small to really, I don't know, like break. And it needs to break a little bit to get the paper off using that method. Then pulse it through your food processor for a bit. I use both chop and grind when I'm using the food processor. Um, I just alternate between the two and I kind of glance at my food to see if it's as small as I want it to be. The size of the vegetables here should be pretty small. Um, unless you have a love affair with onions, you don't want them to be too big because then they'll be very obvious in the patty. Then you're going to take the food processor contents and bring it to a strainer, preferably a fine mesh one, and you're going to strain the vegetables through that because, as you'll probably notice when you're getting it out, it's very wet, and like I said earlier, um, you do not want a wet burger. That will be the death of you in this recipe. A wet burger falls apart. At least a wet vegetarian burger falls apart. Haven't made a real meat burger in a long time. So you're going to pour everything into the strainer and then you can use a towel. I don't like to get stuff dirty so I just use my hands and you're gonna see the liquid come through the mesh. I hope you can see that there in the sink. Um, keep doing that for a while until it's very difficult to get any more liquid out. And it's, um, and it's fairly easy to hold in your hand. Like the, um, the vegetables should be damp but not soaking in your hand if you can like pick it up and hold it from the strainer. That's a good indicator for me to let me know I've gotten enough water out. Put the vegetables into a bowl with the beans and then get a half teaspoon of cayenne powder or red pepper flakes if you have that. Um, most of my recipes that you're going to see here, I use cayenne powder because I ran out of red pepper flakes and realized they were kind of the same thing. So anytime a recipe says red pepper flakes, I'll just use cayenne and vice versa. And then one teaspoon of cumin. Then
then mix it all up together. It was kind of a pain in the neck using my spoon. Um, I might try using my hands next time. I, I think it just would have worked a lot easier, despite how messy it would have been. Now we're getting into our egg substitute. If you don't want it to be vegan, or if you have a better egg substitute that you prefer, go ahead and use that equivalent of one egg. I'm going to do three tablespoons of water mixed with one tablespoon of cornstarch. That equals one egg in baking and one egg in burger making. Whisk, 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 whisk your cornstarch, whisk your cornstarch. After whisking, add your egg or egg substitute to the bowl with all the other ingredients and stir well. The recipe then calls for two third cup of breadcrumbs. I have this giant container that I hope I can get rid of soon. If you've got recipes that involve using up breadcrumbs, please share them with me in the comments below because I have got to think of something else to use these breadcrumbs for. This is the only recipe I currently have that involves breadcrumbs. And I would like to get rid of the breadcrumbs and use a gluten-free substitute, which is oatmeal. I can make oat flour uh, using that, well, using the Vitamix or the food processor. Um, so I'd like to do that going forward so I don't have to buy breadcrumbs anymore. I'm kind of scared they're gonna go bad. Um, then once you've added your breadcrumbs or your oat flour or any other gluten-free flour type substitute you want to use, mix everything up well again. So I do not measure the oil here. Um, I'm going to guess maybe half a cup or so is what I used. You also don't have to use olive oil. You can use um, canola oil or any other kind of vegetable oil or lard if you're not making it vegan. <laughs> something, something else that works for you. Um, one thing I missed doing on this recipe, according to what I recorded, is it does say salt and pepper to taste. So um, I think I should maybe move that in my recipe. I, I always save everything in words so I can change it. I'm going to move that up next to where the, oh, it is right next to the cumin and cayenne powder. Well, that's a shame. I can't believe I missed it. I think I should put it before the breadcrumbs. That'll help me read it better. Then form the patties. The recipe, the original one that I found, says four patties. That's um, enormous. I've always been able to get eight patties out of this recipe. Um, and I don't know about the rest of you, like how do you like to save your recipes? Because I will find them on Pinterest. I, um, I'll try them and then I'll determine if I'm going to do any substitutes, either because certain ingredients aren't as easy for me to get or they're really expensive or I'm only going to use it for that recipe so I don't want to hang on to it after that recipe's over. So I'll do all these crazy substitutes, um, which is what I'm showing you essentially, the ones that the substitutes I use. And then I save the recipe, my version in Word, in a folder on my computer. Um, so then I can change them if, if things change essentially. Like um, when I found out that I had high cholesterol, I changed some of my ground beef recipes to um, mushroom or lentils instead and then I have a whole new recipe I can use. So I'm gonna try to change this recipe right now so move the breadcrumbs after the salt and pepper so that maybe next time I make this I'll see the salt and pepper and I'll remember 
that it, it would have tasted great with it. Um, I think because I used cayenne powder, I didn't really notice that there was no salt and pepper. But yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I literally finished my last burger yesterday. I, I made this video a couple weeks ago. And it definitely could have used some salt. I hadn't even really realized that. So um, this is getting kind of smoky. I would advise that you do not let this happen. Um, fires in kitchens are very common and real. So add more oil as you see it getting smoky. And um, as far as the heat, my recipe doesn't say how high to put it, which basically means medium high for the most part. You've got to get the sear, like the this char color on it, as you're seeing now. Um, a little bit darker than that would have even been better. And the recipe also says that if you prefer cooking this in the oven, you can put it at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes on each side. It does say you should put oil on the baking sheet. So I think that they're going to need to kind of sear or boil in something to look correct and look like burgers. I'm feeling lonely. You want more Put my arms around you We'll be tangled up I'll be your love, be your love Like you never known I wanna pull you down to the floor I've got you in my sights now So close but I can't touch you Maybe We should just This was my first time cooking these burgers on the cast iron skillet uh, That's actually my husband's skillet, I never really use it um, don't know if you caught it earlier, but I have no upper body strength and sometimes lifting that thing out of the cabinet is a pain in the ass or um, trying to move it is just, I don't know. Do you ever have trouble carrying a gallon of milk? Because I have always had trouble carrying a gallon of milk. It has to be right up against my chest like it's a, a cat in order to like really get it from one place to the other. Um, so a good tip with these burgers or anything that you're kind of sort of frying on a skillet is to keep it in a smaller container. If um, you had it in, like say I had a really small skillet, which I don't, this is probably about the size of all of our skillets. Um, I could cook them one at a time in the skillet and use a little bit less oil just because um, the oil spreads all over and it's not actually touching the burger everywhere. So um, you could essentially try to use a container where the oil has less room to spread and that way there would be more oil on your burger. Um, as far as depth of the oil, the recipe does say to have it like a quarter inch deep, but I never get it that much because I just can't stand wasting stuff and I always like... Like the way you see now with all the oils spraying all over the place. Um, it's not that deep. It's probably an eighth of an inch deep. Um, it should definitely be deeper to get the char on the sides of the burgers. But it's not like all that necessary, I don't think. So if you don't want to waste a lot of oil, try those methods. So close but I can't touch you. I like to make spicy mayonnaise when I make burgers, and I think this just is a result of having gone to Popeyes before I had, oh, before I was aware of cholesterol problems. I'm pretty sure I always had them. So um, Popeyes, the reason that sandwich is so good is because they put spicy mayonnaise on it. So I make spicy mayonnaise with my burgers all the time now. So this is what the burgers look like when they're done. You can see there's some color on them. I threw on some mayonnaise, mustard, and pickles as well because that is how I like my burgers. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe. This was delicious. Honestly, if I could eat this like every day, I probably would. Um, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye.